In this exam, we're examining the pre-COVID nature of the business of Broadway shows in New York City. We've got data on Broadway 2017 to 2020, weekly information on gross revenue, attendance, and other things of live Broadway shows. We've got the date, show, the type of the show, the theater where the show is showing number of performances that week, gross revenue, gross ticket revenue, and dollars and attendance, and a percent capacity, a share of available seats that are filled. How many observations do we have? How many shows? And so on. So let's load some packages. Library, tidyverse, we're going to need. And uh, we will probably also need Stargazer, library for Stargazer. Oh, let's uh, do that. Let's load the data. Let's call it DD for Broadway. Read uh, CSV. And the name of the file is Broadway 2017 to 2020.csv. We've got uh, 3,770 observations, uh, nine variables. Here's a show, Ain't Too Proud, Aladdin, Be More Chill, Chicago, King Kong, Kiss Me Kate. Okay, some of these uh, probably look uh, familiar. We've got the number of performances per week, about eight. That seems reasonable. Here are the grosses, you know, $500,000 per week for Pretty Woman. Uh, 5,000 people looks all pretty good. Uh, let's just check uh, how many observations we already know. Uh, if you want to show that uh, in the markdown, we can type n row. We could do n distinct for bd about a number of uh, for show actually so that we know how many different uh, shows we have. 122 shows. I asked uh, for a number of uh, different uh, theaters as well. So 120 distinct shows uh, over a three year period. Uh, theater, uh, actually it's spelled uh, theater, I think. Let's see how it's spelled. Yeah, three. Okay. Um, 41 theater, 41 Broadway theaters. That looks about right. And how many dates? The date is in the weekend column. Weekend. Uh, it's, a, it's a date. <laughs> um, and uh, signifies the last day of the week for which uh, we're reporting the revenue and attendance. We have 116, so um, weeks, so it's, uh, it's not quite, uh, it's a little more than two years of data. Okay, fantastic. Uh, create a time plot uh, showing the total grosses for each week and each type. Um, three lines in one plot. Uh, let's do that. Uh, so let's do then by week and uh, type. And, uh, we're going to uh, start with BD for Broadway, the original data set. We're going to group, group by type and uh, week end. And uh, we will uh, summarize. Let's say total gross is just the sum of uh, grosses. Okay. And uh, that gives us uh, 314. That makes sense because we have uh, 116 days. We've got three types. Not all types actually might be uh, there uh, every week in particular specials when every week has a special. But so let's plot this. ggplot will do by week type uh, is the data frame. The aesthetics function uh, as uh, on the x-axis we have a week end. 
on the y-axis, uh, we'll have uh, total gross and we want color uh, to be mapped to type. And uh, let's do geom line. <clears throat> and we can clearly see uh, most of the revenue comes from uh, musicals, plays, distant second, specials, uh, last. Uh, in terms of uh, seasonality, uh, it clearly looks uh, like in December, uh, at the end of the year, uh, there's a big spike in uh, revenue. Create a table showing the top three shows. So now we're back to the show level. Um, not a performance level, a show level uh, in terms of gross ticket revenue by each type. So we want to do this by show and well, each show belongs to just one type. So we could just call this a uh, by show. We'll start with the uh, BD and uh, we'll group uh, by show and type so that uh, we keep uh, the information about what type of uh, show it is and uh, we will uh, summarize we're going to do about uh, third gross uh, which is uh, summing the grosses across uh, all the performances and uh, Oh, well, let's uh, just check this out, uh, see what uh, this gives us by show. There's 122 shows, and here are the top uh, grosses, uh, Hamilton, number one, Lion King, Wicked, and then uh, among plays, it's uh, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. So let's uh, group by again, but this time let's group by type. <clears throat> And within each type, oh, let's do mutate actually. Mutate will calculate uh, the rank of the show uh, in uh, the descending order of uh, total gross. Um, sure, let's uh, run this. Uh, let's check it out. Uh, we just added uh, a column uh, so that if I go here uh, and sort it uh, from the highest, we see Hamilton is number one, Lion King number two, Harry Potter is number one, but it's number one uh, in plays. And so we want to keep only shows that are ranked among the top three. So we'll do filter and uh, rank has to be less than uh, four. And, and then let's just do by show so that it uh, shows up. And, and we can see that's not quite right. American Utopia, that's the special. Okay, that's string number one. Let's arrange this uh, though. Let's uh, arrange this by type and by uh, total gross. Yeah, so hmm. let's arrange it though by uh, descending uh, total gross so that uh, we have uh, the highest grossing shows uh, at the top, like Hamilton is number one, Harry Potter is number one among plays, Springste Springsteen on Broadway is number one among specials. Fantastic. What is the typical number of weeks <clears throat> a show is in theaters? Um, this, is, this is different for plays versus musical. And we can ignore the fact that uh, we only have uh, a snapshot. Uh, so some of these plays have been have been running uh, for months or years, and some of the plays keep on uh, going. So we just during this uh, snapshot, uh, do musicals uh, run longer uh, than plays, or what's the average uh, number of weeks that a play is in theaters? So this is basically, again, asking us to do things by show. So I'm going to overwrite that uh, data frame. Hopefully I'm not going to need it anymore. Uh, I'm going to do Broadway. I'm going to group this uh, 
by show and type. And this time, instead of asking for number of uh, value of uh, the revenue, we'll ask for number of weeks. And if we're doing this by show, that's just counting the number of rows. So the show is there for three weeks. It's going to have to be in the data set only three times. Uh, so, um, so this data set should have just 122 rows, one row for each show. You can see Bronx Dale is there for 34 weeks, Aladdin 117, um, Chicago 117, Choir Boy, and so on. So let's um, see what is the uh, average of that. So we could do certainly mean of mean of um, by show. Well, you know, let's do this. Um, let's do descriptive uh, statistics. So uh, you could do a summary. Um, well, actually, I want to show it uh, nicely. So I'm going to do uh, by show and uh, we will summarize and we'll do you know typical uh, number of shows so we could do mean of uh, number of weeks we could also do median of uh, number of uh, weeks number week so it's not weeks um and um, so we're going to just group by nothing. Uh, so it's uh, really just uh, summarizes it by, you know, across all of the observations. So we, we take average uh, across all 122 shows, median across all 122 uh, shows. But uh, we also want to see if this is different for musicals uh, versus plays. So we could do group by type, and uh, we could see that uh, musicals last uh, much longer, uh, 56 weeks on average versus 16 weeks for plays. <clears throat> Let's use attendance uh, to and gross revenue to calculate uh, average uh, ticket price, which for shows had the most expensive average uh, ticket price. So let's do a by show. Um, probably don't need to create a new data frame, but uh, let's do it anyway. Let's uh, create the ticket price, average ticket price for a performance. So ticket uh, price, well, that has to be the ratio of uh, grosses by attendance. Um, because uh, if they go a thousand dollars and they had a hundred people in the show attending, then average ticket price must have been ten dollars. Fantastic. Um, now, what can we do with this? So uh, we can uh, group by show, and uh, we'll take we'll summarize. They do another uh, average uh, ticket uh, price. Sure, average ticket price is equal to mean of uh, ticket uh, ticket price, <clears throat> and uh, we're going to arrange uh, all these shows in descending order by average uh, ticket price and uh, we'll just ask for did I say top five and equals five so um, let's actually don't we don't even need to create that new data frame uh, we'll just um, 
temporarily uh, create a data frame that is uh, immediately printed, but it's not stored in our uh, environment. Springsteen on Broadway with an average price of $508. Hamilton comes in second, Dave Chappelle for $212 uh, average ticket price. Okay. So examine the relationship between capacity utilization and ticket price. So I should have probably created the ticket price in the BD data set, in the big uh, data set. Uh, so let me do that Broadway, Broadway, um, and uh, we'll uh, mutate, create an uh, average uh, ticket uh, price. So we just added uh, that row ratio of grosses to attendance. <clears throat> And uh, we want to know what's the relationship between capacity utilization and ticket price. We can do different things. Uh, let's uh, do a correlation between uh, ticket price and um, percent, oops, um, percent uh, capacity, uh, positive correlation. So uh, the higher the ticket price, the higher uh, the percent uh, capacity. We could also plot this. Uh, let's plot BD. AES is going to be, let's do a scatter plot since we have really two quantitative variables here. X equals uh, ticket price. Price and Y equals uh, percent uh, capac capacity. And uh, for scatter plot, let's do the geom uh, of a point. Clearly, um, you know, as uh, capacity uh, goes up, ticket prices go up. Clearly, uh, the producers, when they see a lot of demand, <laughs> when they reach a uh, capacity, uh, rational thing to do is to uh, raise uh, prices. So uh, high demand uh, really is associated with uh, high prices and high uh, capacity utilization. And that's what we see in this graph. Okay, uh, very nice. Uh, Tony's, uh, let's load the data. <clears throat> So Tony's, okay, and uh, read underscore CSV. And the name of uh, the file is uh, Best Musical Tony's. Okay. Best new Musical Tony's.csv. And we've got uh, three columns. Um, the name of the musical, the season in which the musical was either nominated or won. Um, and uh, let's look at the most recent data. The last winner uh, was uh, Moulin, Moulin Rouge. Hadestown the year before, Band's Visit, Dear Evan Hansen, Hamilton in 2015, 2016. Okay. Now, you can notice right away uh, that uh, the names of uh, the musicals in the Tony's data set have a regular uh, capitalization, whereas in our Broadway data set, uh, it's all caps. So if I try to join these two data sets, uh, they're not going to join on uh, the show name because uh, Hamilton with a just capital H does not match does not line up with uh, Hamilton in all caps. So one thing I could do is uh, I can uh, mutate the column uh, that has uh, the name of uh, the show, which is uh, musical. And uh, musical is going to be a uh, string uh, to upper of musical. And uh, let's see what uh, the Tony's data set looks like now. Now it looks the same way. Uh, the names of uh, shows look the same way. They're all caps as what we have in the Broadway data set. So now we have some hope of uh, being able to join musicals 
And so let's create just musicals um, from our BD Broadway data set. So we'll do a filter a type, it's in capital type, uh, has to be equal to musical. So musicals uh, now has uh, 2700 observations instead of uh, 3700 because we just are looking at uh, musicals and uh, let's do musicals again and let's do left uh, join because we want to keep the nominated musicals and non-nominated uh, musicals. We want to have all musicals still in the data set but uh, for those that were nominated uh, we're gonna we're gonna join uh, that those um, nominated, whether they were just nominated or won, uh, into the musicals uh, data set. So we'll do musicals uh, joined with Toonies uh, by, and uh, the name of the show is called show in the musicals data frame, and it's called uh, musical and the Tony's uh, data frame. So let's see if uh, this will work. Now we have, um, here is uh, Ain't Too Proud, uh, that was nominated. Um, the next show, Aladdin, was also nominated. Be More Chill, wasn't. Um, the next one, uh, Beautiful, also wasn't. Uh, and so on. Uh, so, so this this works really, really great. We still have our twenty seven hundred uh, musicals or musical performances, and uh, some of them we know that they were nominated. Some of them uh, were not. Okay. So in question eight, show some of the differences in various business metrics between musicals that were nominated, musicals that were not nominated. So. Let's do musicals uh, and let's uh, create a flag musicals that uh, tells us whether or not uh, musical was nominated. And uh, that's we'll create that using the if uh, else uh, function. And uh, wait. What makes uh, a musical uh, nominated or not? Uh, it will um, depend on whether or not uh, the status is uh, missing. Uh, so if uh, st the status uh, column is uh, NA, uh, then uh, the musical was not in the Tony's uh, data set uh, and that means it was not nominated. Uh, if it's non, not missing uh, or really otherwise, then it is uh, nominated. Let's see if uh, that worked. Uh, status. So musicals. Uh, and here, right, we could see status, right? If a status is NA, uh, then it was not nominated. Uh, we see that uh, Be More Chill was not nominated. Uh, all these other ones were nominated, even the winners, uh, of course, were at some point uh, nominated. Okay. Um, so now we can look at the, the differences between these guys. Uh, let's do stargazer uh, as data frame. We could do filter of musicals and uh, we're going to filter on uh, nominated uh, has to be equal to yes. And uh, we'll do text uh, equals, uh, sorry, actually type equals uh, text and uh, we'll run that. So we're running this uh, across uh, performances, not uh, individual shows, uh, but uh, that's okay. It's going to tell us a little more, a little bit, uh, what is the average performance, not rather what is the average you know, show uh, revenue. So 
uh, clearly we could see that uh, those that were nominated uh, on the average performance brings about 1.3 million for the nominated shows and about 1 million uh, for the not nominated shows. Uh, percent capacity is certainly higher at the nominated shows. The ticket prices are higher. Um, so this is not uh, surprising. Of course, we could run more uh, diagnostics here. We could run densities and box plots. Uh, some of that I do in uh, the uh, answers. Uh, I'll skip that uh, for the purposes of this video. Broadway season generally runs from July to June. Using the data on musicals only, create a column that identifies the season in which the musical opened. So, so we need to figure out uh, when the musical first appeared uh, in the data set. And um, uh, how can we do that? Well, really to sort of remind ourselves uh, how the data is organized. Let's uh, sort the musicals uh, data set by arrange it by show and uh, week end. Let's do that. So here's a Bronx Tale. Now Bronx Tale was already open uh, when the data starts. Uh, so that's not a good uh, example. We're going to actually exclude shows that started uh, when our data or started. Uh, we want only new shows, shows that appeared uh, after our data starts. Ain't Too Proud is an example. You can see that the first time it appears in our data set is on March uh, 19, not in uh, December 2017. Uh, and so March 3rd is when Ain't Too Proud opened that week. Um, let's do one more. Aladdin, open way before uh, our data starts. Uh, what else? Uh, Anastasia, same thing. It was already open way before that. King Kong, I think King Kong actually opened. Uh, yeah, King Kong opened uh, in October uh, 2018. So how can we figure out what is the opening date? Well, the opening date is going to be the minimum value of the weekend within each show. Uh, so uh, that's one way we could do it. Another way we could do it is uh, by you know, using our trick uh, with the lagged function. Uh, if uh, the lagged uh, title is different from the, the new title when the data is sorted by show and date, uh, that is going to be the first time uh, the show appears in the data set. But let's use the minimum technique in the typed up answers. I do it uh, both ways. So let me run that. Uh, I'm going to actually run it on uh, this as well. And uh, we will do, we'll group uh, the data by show. And uh, we'll create a column that says opening, opening week. And that opening week is basically the minimum of a week end. And you know what, while we're at this, let's uh, filter. Uh, we want uh, the uh, opening, if the opening week, opening uh, week, we don't want it to be as uh, a date, uh, December, I think it's uh, 17, 2017. Let's call this musicals, how about musicals new? Uh, so that we don't overwrite our old uh, musicals uh, data frame. Okay, musicals new, fewer uh, observations. Ain't too proud is there, that's good, uh, because we know that that uh, show started after our data uh, started. And uh, its uh, opening uh, week was March 3rd, the week that ended in uh, March 3rd, uh, 2019. 
Here's some other shows, uh, Pretty Woman, and uh, and that opened on uh, July 22nd, 2018. And then we see all its performances afterwards. Uh, right? When is it? When does it first appear? Uh, in July uh, 22, 2018. Okay, so so what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to create uh, that column and exclude shows that began before our uh, data began. How many new musicals open during each season? So we're not done yet. We also need to create uh, a data frame uh, that tells us uh, what is the season uh, in which uh, the show opened. And so um, we'll create a new column, mutate. Let's call it uh, season opened. And uh, we'll just do this with brute force. So we've got just three years, three seasons. So we could just write uh, if the date is between July 2017 to June 2018, it's going to be uh, 2017, 2018 season and do it three times. Uh, so let's, that's, we could do it with uh, multiple if else statements or we could do case when so we'll do use case when and we need uh, opening week to be greater than us dot date of uh, 2017 let's do zero one uh, zero seven uh, and uh, opening week needs to be less than as dot date um twenty eighteen oh so June so it's gonna be June thirtieth uh oh not June so it's gonna be oh six uh thirtieth uh, and if that's the case, uh, then uh, the opening season is uh, 2017, 2018. Um, and we have uh, two more cases. You could just uh, copy and paste this uh, and change the years. So this is going to be July of 2018 to June 2019. And the season is uh, 18 to 19 and uh, this is going to be July 2019 to June 20 and that season is uh, 20 to no sorry 19 19 to 20 is the season okay so this is a little bit uh, laborious but uh, we can uh, uh, do this. Uh, let's make sure uh, this uh, worked. Um, musicals new. And now we should have a uh, season open uh, for all of these. I guess I don't want to have an equal uh, sign here. We should have just a hyphen. Uh, so let's uh, change that very quickly. And uh, I think think uh, we just need to find out how many new shows we have uh, in each season. So let's do musicals new and we'll uh, group group by uh, season opening season. Season opened and uh, we summarize and ask for number of uh, distinct shows. Uh, and we've got uh, 7, 12, uh, 7. I think uh, it should be actually 13. You know what? I wasn't very careful about uh, this uh, greater than. So this needs to be, uh, it needs to be equal greater than or equal to and uh it has to be uh less than or equal to so let's run this uh again oh okay i'm sorry this actually has to be 
uh, the equal sign comes after the greater than so let's run that and it's uh we've got uh, seven new shows in 1718 13 new shows in 1819 and just six new shows that's not really a complete season that we have for 19 and 20 uh so uh perfect using only musicals that opened uh, uh during the 2018 and 19 season because that's the only complete season that we have uh what is the difference between those that were nominated and those that were not uh, nominated so that we could see the value of uh, uh, being nominated. So we'll do musicals uh, new. We will filter uh, open, uh, actually it's called season opened has to be equal to uh, 2018. 2019 and uh, we'll group the data by uh, nominated and we will uh, summarize and look at uh, well, let's look at them um, hmm. so so sure we could look at performances or we look at uh, uh, the entire uh shows let's look at the performances let's do mean of uh grosses and yeah how much more uh did they earn uh relative to those that were not uh, nominated so i think this should actually uh work and we could see that uh on average uh the performances of uh nominated shows earn um you know, 1.1 million, those that are not nominated, they earn about 739 uh, million. Um, okay, uh, perfect. Uh, so this will this will definitely uh, work. Um, can we use KNN uh, to predict who's going to get nominated or not? Um, certainly we could. Uh, so we would want to make sure that we're only using the data prior uh, to the nomination because we could see how uh, the nomination actually affects uh what happens uh, uh nominations certainly attract um more audiences and more weeks of uh, perf performances uh one drawback of the knn is uh, that it doesn't show us how uh each predictor affects uh whether or not a show gets nominated and here we would really want to know how to make a show that gets uh nominated and so uh, perhaps alternative uh methods would be appropriate here i wrote up a uh, more detailed answer in uh the uh, typed up answers so i urge you to take a look um i'm gonna stop here